So for our topic, which is the module 5, the material handling and storage. So for this topic, uh, we will be able to demonstrate methods of safe manual handling, discuss safe procedures in mechanical handling, and enumerate standard requirements in material storage. So material handling is a technique which includes the art of lifting, placing, storing, or movement materials through the use of one's physical strength or appropriate handling equipment. So material handling um, <coughs> has two general classification, which is the manual material handling and the mechanical material handling. About manual materials handling. Our objective is to recognize material handling hazards. Manual materials handling means moving or handling things by lowering, lifting, pushing, pulling, carrying, holding, or restraining using one's physical strength. Manual materials handling is also the most common cause of occupational fatigue, low back pain, and lower back injuries. It is riskier than one might think as it could lead to strains, sprains, ones, fractures, and hernias. Manual lifting. On manual lifting, we should avoid manual lifting when possible. Also, limit vertical lifting like knuckle to shoulder height, always be in good physical shape and good posture in order to lift things well. Always have a plan before doing it. You must have a good and strong grip in order to have a control on lifting and keep the load close to the body to have a great balance and perfect momentum. Do not twist or bend sideways. Always get help on carrying and lifting large or heavy loads. Recommendations for specific tasks. Always grasp opposite corners on boxes, cartons, and sacks. Always use me mechanical assistance for barrels and drums. Wear leather gloves when handling sheet metal. Plate glass, carry with bottom edge in glove palm, other hand on top edge, and never carry plate glass under the arm. Use a team for long objects because it might be heavy. Types of protective clothing to be used inside the working stations. Lightweight, flexible, tear and puncture resistant clothing. Safety boots with toe cups and slip resistant soles. Protective gloves appropriate for the materials being handled. Also, we have clothes that are prohibited inside the working stations. We have apro aprons or coats, clothing with exposed buttons, zippers, or loose flaps, and heavy duty mitts. Manual hand Handling Guidelines So, the first manual handling guidelines is shoveling guidelines. So, what is shoveling guidelines? This is a tool with a handle and a broad scope or a blade for digging and moving material. So, this is the guidelines of shoveling. Put weight on your front foot and use your leg to push the shovel. Keep your feet wide apart and place your front foot close to the shovel. Shift weight to your near foot and keep the load close to your body. Next. Turn your feet in a one direction of throw. The next guidelines is digging guidelines. So what is digging? To make a form by removing. So this is the guidelines digging. Push shape down using leg muscle. The last slide load close to body. Ensure load is lost from ground before lifting. Next. The lifting guidelines. So, what is lift? To care from a lower to a higher position. So, this is the lifting guidelines. For preparation, before lifting or carrying, plan out your lift. Think about how heavy upward is the load. Where I'm going with the load? Are the addict two hand tools on the load? What is the temperature next? Is there adequate lightning? Number two, close the load as possible. Try to keep your elbows and arms close to your body. Keep your back straight during the lift by tightening the stomach muscle, bending at the knees, keeping the load close and centered in the front of you, and looking up and ahead. Get a good hand tool and do not twist 
by lifting. Do not jerk, use a smooth motion while lifting. If the load is too heavy to allow this, find someone to help you with the lift. Limit weight your lift to, more, to no more than 50 pounds. Next, number 3, uncurring or lifting compact loads. Do not twist your or turn your body, instead move your feet to turn. Your hips, shoulder, toes, and knees should stay facing the same direction. Next, keep the load as close to your body as possible with your elbows close to your sides. Next, if you feel fatigued, set the load down and rest for a few minutes. Last, humps can be helpful in moving heavy items from one level to another. The four, setting down. Setting to put in a specified position or arrangement. Setting down, you set the load down in the same way you pick it up, but in the reverse order. Bend at the knees, to not the hips. Keep your head up, your stomach muscle tight, and not twist your body. Keep the load as close to your body as possible. Next, wait until the load is secure to release your hand to fold. So the other important things to remember, to limit your lift to no more than 50 pounds, your lifting load is heavier than 50 pounds. Use two or more people to lift the load. If load is heavier than 100 pounds, have to be lifted, use mechanical means, my hand trucks, push carts, etc. Remember to obtain training and authorize before using forklift. It is easier and safer to push than you pull. Use personal protective equipment where needed, such as gloves, with a good grip in steel toed boots where appropriate to avoid finger injuries and contact stress. Sure that gloves fit properly and provide adequate grip. If possible, utilize hand tools such as handles, slots, or holes that provide enough room for gloved hands. Try to use materials that are packaged with proper handholds or move materials into containers with a good handhold. Suction device are helpful to lifting suction box and other material with smooth but surface. Other tools may be able that can create temporary handles. To avoid using awkward postures such as overhead reaching and crawling by placing objects of shelves, table, racks, or stacked pallets that are waist high, or by using ladders or inner lips where necessary to be elevate yourself and minimize the overhead reaching. Roll out deck and truck beds to be utilized and bring materials closer to the employee and eliminate the need to crawl into the back. Material handling safety should be a top priority for all employers and employees. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there are more than 3 million non-fatal work-related injuries and illness reported each year. While the exact cause of such injuries and illness varies, many of them are the result of poor material handling practices. There are two different ways to handle materials in the workplace manually and mechanically. First is manually powered material handling equipment, which involves workers physical lifting and manipulating the respective materials themselves. It reduces the physical effort, which materials handling easier and safer. There are tips when using mechanical aids. First, check for the availability of mechanical aids before lifting or moving loads. Second, do not operate any equipment if you are not trained to use it. Third, keep the equipment in good operating condition. It saves effort while transporting loads. Fourth, select the right equipment to compensate the task. And last, specific task or object requires specialized equipments. Here are some examples of manually powered material handling equipment. Rolling platform, hand truck, shelf truck, platform truck, semi-live skid, rock or bin, stair climbing truck, frame hand truck, pump truck, dump truck, tilting drum cradles, frame hand truck or dolly. The second way of handling materials is mechanically. Mechanically powered material handling equipment, which involves the use of special machines and lifting equipments to perform the task. It has two qualifications, lifting equipment 
and transport equipment. In lifting equipment, it includes a variety of items for lifting heavy and bulky items with minimal human intervention such as hoist and cranes. In transport equipment, on the other hand, consists of forklifts, dump trucks, trailers, and conveyors. There are precautions to ensure safe operation of mechanically powered handling equipment. First, a worker must not operate an equipment if he is not trained to use it. Second, operator must be certified and authorized. Third, operators must be trained in safety and health involving handling equipment operation. And lastly, equipment must be properly maintained and regularly inspected. In ropes, first, you should know what particular rope can handle particular task or load. Second, keep the rope in good condition at all times. Chains, do not let chains get kinked, knocked, or twisted. And lastly, steel and plastic strap. Make sure straps are not too loose or tight. Do not lift by the strap unless the same is designed for the purpose. So next is the workspace layout. So workspace layout is the area within which you perform the tasks that add up to your job. The, first, uh, the physical design of a workspace includes the settings, the amount of space needed, and the positioning of furniture, tools, equipment, and other items necessary to perform the task in respect to proper posture, access, clearance, reach, and vision of the user. So, ang workspace ay ay na pinagtrabuhan natin ay halag apart dahil dito natin ginagawa ang matrabaho natin. Kaya ang poor design o yung di magandang pagkakayos ng ating workspace ay makakapagdunot ng hindi <coughs> magandang sa ating pagtrabaho o sa ating mga katrabaho. Maaari tayong maging sagabal sa ating mga katrabaho dahil hindi maganda ang ayos ng ating lugar. At minsan ay pwede ito magdulot ng injuries and strain due to adoption of uncomfortable working postures, less spare capacity to deal with unexpected events, emergencies, and increased possibility of error, accidents, and efficiency. So how do we, uh, <coughs> how do we optimize our workspace for maximum protection and productivity? So ayon sa Canadian Center for Occupation Health, and safety, ang work area na pinagtrabahon ay dapat makagalaw ng maayos sa mga worker na hindi siya gumagawa ng improper posture sa paggawa ng kanyang trabaho katulad ng bending, twisting, or stretching. First is, <coughs> have all materials at work level. Dapat nakabot ng worker ang lahat ng materials ang nasa tamang position niya, sa proper position niya. Second is, use adjustable elements at the workplace. Kapag magagawa ng trabaho, eh, dapat ay ibagay ang mga gawin hakbang doon sa gagawin ng trabaho. Next is the use of adjustable elements at the workplace. Yung workbench with adjustable height to improve ng working position. So katulad ng workbench, laging gumamit ng lahayon sa workbench ng mga kapabing at naging mabilis ang pagtatrabaho. Self-adjusting platform sa automatically matches worker site. Para hindi mapagod na mabilis sa mga nagtatrabaho sa kakayo ko at di sa mga itang malikod. Kailangan ginamit ng self-adjusting platform. So to ensure that there is no room to turn around to put back to steam. So kailangan din ng enough space para sa mga workers to turn back or to malikod para maiwasan ng injury dulot ng steam. So use adjustable supports or suspenders to operate heavy tools. Two suspenders reduce muscular effort, compression, and the back. So, yeah. Tool supports eliminate overstretching and overreaching. Lift and tilt device inside opening and being reduced blending. This means that allows easy access. Proper storing of materials is very important. Why? Having a proper storage materials help to prevent losses from damage and deterioration in quality of the materials. Materials should be stored neatly and orderly. Storage should have these following features. At least two exits, properly illuminated, properly ventilated, and have restricted areas. Material storage. Things you need to know in your storage area. Materials that you need more frequently and use must be placed closer to you. Materials must not obstruct the following. Alarm boxes, sprinkle system control, first aid equipment, 
fuse boxes, aisles, and exit. What should be remembered when setting up a storage area? Store materials at a convenient height. Leave the lowest shelf unused if necessary. Use vertically mobile shelves to avoid bending and overhead reach. Use bin racks for storing small items. Store heavy frequently used materials at waist height. Do not store materials at door level. Use hand racks with elevating devices in storage and loading areas such as coil handling, winch operated, and position work. Use racks with a lifting devices to avoid bending. Use elevating platforms to avoid overhead reaching. Use rollers to eliminate manual lifting and carrying. Use floor rollets while loading or unloading trucks to reduce lifting. Use a sliding bed while loading and unloading small trucks to avoid overreaching and carrying in an awkward position. Eliminate extra loading or unloading when possible. Unload as close as possible to the place where materi material will be needed. Use a ramps to avoid lifting and dragging over edge. Proper material storage is essential in maintaining a functional office operation. Improper storage and can lead to injuries and, inc and contribute to the fuel load in a building fire. Storage of office material should be kept to a minimum so as not to increase the combustible fire fuel load. Keep storage organized and neatly arranged so, so that items can be easily retrieved when needed. Storage rocks and shelves should be firmly secured to prevent them from falling over or collapsing. Do, do not overload the intended design of the rock or shelf. Be sure it is capable of handling the materials placed on it. Keep heavier items and materials on lower to middle shelf for easy retrieval. Items located above the shoulder while standing on the floor increase physical risk to the upper body when loading and unloading materials from shelves. Keep step ladders and stools in the middle area and always use them to reach upper shelves. Never stand on a furniture that is not designed and stable for such use. Use a ladder or appropriate step stool when reaching for materials. In building and areas with sprinkle system, never store materials within 18 inches of sprinkle heads. A full spray pattern is needed for the sprinkler's head to work effectively when it is activated. Be sure materials are placed on shelves so they will not topple and fall off. Provide aisles when needed and ensure they have minimum width of 18 inches. That's all for material storage.